Hello and welcome back to Airtek Hunting. We've got the FX Pantera Compact or Hunter Edition again, but this time we're shooting 18 grain JSB pellets, so sit back and enjoy. So as mentioned, this is exactly the same gun as in the previous video, but I'm just going to quickly run through it. We've got a Titan scope on here, double bottle system. In the previous video, I said 280 millimeter barrel, but it's actually a 300 millimeter. So that was my mistake. And then we've got the Donny FL Ronin on here to keep it quiet. We've got the Sabre Tactical Bottle Clamp, Acutec Bipod. And then we're going to shoot the 18 grain, which means the gun is tuned at a slightly lower power level. So that should bring efficiency up. So with the 21 grain H&N, we got four magazines out of the gun, but I guess we're going to get about five magazines out of it now, just because the efficiency has been lifted a bit. But yeah, that's the gun, a sweet setup, and I really like it. I quickly loaded up the magazines, and then it was just a quick speed and zero check before we started the day. Now it's spot on. So there's a fly on there. I'm going to see if I can get the fly. <laughs> See if we can get this flight. There's a better one. Dead. <laughs> awesome. With that shot, zero was confirmed and we went straight into action. Right, we've got some starlings on 83 meters. I'll go for them quickly. There's a pigeon. I want to get the starlings with me. Great, you ready? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> he's down a little bit of wind up there i should have held a little bit but uh, i still got him awesome 83 meters a slight breeze pushed this pellet slightly to the left but luckily i still get him in the spine and he goes down with a bc of only 0.035 the 18 grain jsb is quite acceptable to wind so even the slightest breeze will steer it off course so we are definitely going to walk around a bit. Maggie's already on the first pigeons. There's quite a few on the roof there. So she's going to set up for the shot here. Yay! That's a nice one for my first pigeon for today and 62 meters. Maggie hits this one right in the vitals and he goes down on the back of the roof. So we just saw a bunch of pigeons come in. There's another one. We landed on the back of that roof, but oh, there he comes up on the roof over there. And yeah, it's nothing on the tower. So Maggie, I'm gonna go for that one. <laughs> Yo, okay. 55 meters, that one's going nowhere. Maggie puts him down with a stunning neck shot that leaves him completely paralyzed. Now we're on the same spot, but there's some sparrows to the left, so she's going to set up for those now. Okay. Yo, okay. Sparrow at 30 meters. This was an easier shot and he explodes out of existence. Then it was my turn and I found some doves on the other side of the barn. Down you go, 76 meters. Awesome. <laughs> the pellet travels perfectly and hits him right in the vitals. Vital shots can sometimes take some time to take effect, and that is why you see him flapping a bit on his way down to the ground. It doesn't take too long though, and by this time he is out cold. I've got some starlings at 41. Let's go there, 41, 41 on the scope. I uh, hope they don't fly away because of the truck. Yeah, got him. <laughs> 41 meters. I had to rush this one, but I timed the shot perfectly and hit him center mass. This spot turned out to be very fruitile as the target keeps on coming in. This time, a sparrow. Yeah, got him. 
estimated that one at 37 meters and yeah, spot on. An easy shot and the pellet hits him right in the back. Then another sparrow showed up. There's a tweak in front so I hope I get him. Yeah, solid, also 37 meters. I was afraid of that tweak in front of him but I think I missed it just. So now I can carry this gun easily and comfortably on my side without worrying it hitting the ground. It's nice and balanced on the grip level as well so when you carry it like this it actually hangs where it should hang nicely angled so it's much easier to carry. You can grip your finger there in the trigger guard and just carry it like that. Nice and comfortable and yeah just works. <laughs> Down he goes, 30 meters, I think it was through the neck. We'll check on the scope cam. My eyes didn't deceive me and this pellet hit him straight through the neck. Somehow the shot did not paralyze him and the pigeon actually gets up and tries to take off. But he runs out of steam and the only direction he is going is down. So let's quickly go and fetch him, see where I got him, but I think it was in the neck. Yeah, it's through the neck. I can't really show that, it's too bloody. <laughs> cool, another one. We then moved on and found a sparrow party on a feed tower close by. Got him, 50 meters and down. You might wonder where the balance is on the shorter version. Well, there you can see it. It's right underneath where the magazine area is. So you can just put it down on the back like that and it will sit without any support. So you can see I can move it around. It's pretty much balanced there. So it's actually a pretty nice spot because this is where you're gonna put the gun down on obstacles as well. You don't need to add any weight or anything. It's just spot on as it is. Solid impact, another 50 meters. I get the distance wrong on this one and it travels a little low. It was time to move on again and we found a nice pole to shoot from on the other side of the farmyard. So we decided to get a few shots from here. Ooh. Got him. That was 82 meters. I don't know if I nicked him, it looked like I had nicked him, but sometimes it happens. The pellet moved slightly to the right and nicks him through the spine, and he was definitely out cold before he hit the ground. I then found a few sparrows towards the back of me and lined up. Oh, down he goes, 54 meters. For some reason I aimed a little low on this sparrow, but luckily he still went down. On the next one I wasn't so lucky though. Oh, he went in just as I shot him. <laughs> lucky bird. <laughs> Talk about a close call, but I took full revenge on the next one. 52 meters and solid and down. And that is how I like it. Nice, solid impact. Maggie spotted something in the tree over here. Looks like a starling or something. It turns out to be a duff and Maggie quickly got into position. Yo, okay. That was loud and straight on dead. Solid fell down. Oh, 30 meters. <laughs> Yes, that was solid and right into the off switch. Maggie wasn't done though and she immediately lined up on the next one. Yay, that was a nice one. 
at sure. 56 meters. She delivers another stunner as she hits this one right in between the breast muscles. She then spots a few pigeons on the other side of the barn. Yeah, there he is. And arrange him at 53 meters. Got it. Got that one. It's going down. It's rolling. I think that was in the head. Still rolling. He's doing the headless chicken dance. Yep. <laughs> and there he goes. And that one was at 53 meters. Another great headshot by Maggie as the pellet travels perfectly through the air. We haven't seen any spirals so far, unlike the H&N pellets we shot in the last episode. So I can now safely say it wasn't the gun. I then spot a head peeking over the roof and it was my turn to get my headshot. Got him. I hope it got it because the GoPro just died. That would suck, but that was in the head. Awesome. I just checked on the footage. It barely got it before it turned off. I don't know why it turned off because these GoPros can sometimes be very temperamental. Um, for some reason it said it's out of battery, but there's 50% battery left. So that was very weird. But luckily I got him in the head just before the GoPro went off. You heard the beep 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 at the end of the shot there. That's when it turned off. It's like just when I shot him, it turned off, but luckily still on there. I then saw a few sparrows on a silo and moved into a more suitable shooting position. <laughs> He's dead. So I was dialed for 79 meters and then he just flew up and got a bit closer. So I just held a little lower and oh, got him. I think it's about probably 70 meters instead of 79. Another beautiful flying pellet, nice trajectory straight into his head. So my verdict on this gun, I actually like it more than the, the longer versions or the longer variants. I've got a 500mm barrel on the way as well, which I will test out. Maybe that is the sweet spot, I don't know yet. But so far, this is the one I prefer for the Pantera. It feels very much like the impact when you carry it, the same kind of weight, the same kind of form factor. It's only when you look down at the gun and you see the double bottles and stuff that you realize yeah, it's a different gun. Um, but so far it's performed exceptionally well for me. It, it does what it needs to do, massive amount of shots. The only gripe I will have is it's a little bit on the heavy side. It's maybe a little bit heavier than the impact as well. Um, so you have to keep that in mind. But as I said, it's very comfortable to carry. So the weight doesn't mind us too much. But other than that, the gun is very reliable, it's very consistent in, in shot and from shot to shot as well, especially shooting pellets at this power level. It just works and it does the job, so I can't complain. I think it's a very dynamic gun, so there's a lot you can do with this. You can add longer barrels, shorter barrels, there's other stuff that's going to come out with the block. You now get a folding stock adapter you can put back here and you can remove the, the bottle at the back. That might make it much lighter as well and then you can literally put it in a duffel bag or something because you can fold it up make it smaller if you watch that holdovers video uh, here's the big thing here's what makes it kind of cool here's why i wanted to have it it's got a folding stock on it and a dang nice one at that it's kind of cool actually to to not have to take a gun case you just uh, throw it in between the clothes <laughs> in the duffel bag video. he's got one of those guns i'll link that down there you can go look at that looks really nice I've got the foldable stock adapter, but I don't have a stock yet. So I'll buy that when I get to the US. It's very expensive here in South Africa. So we're going to RMAC in a few weeks soon in Utah. So I'll get one from, from Utah Air Guns. Great guys over there. So yeah, then I'll see how that goes. Maybe that will be the only thing that this gun needs. But in, if you do that, you're gonna lose the extra air back here. But I think you can compensate by putting a bigger bottle up the front here. Or maybe even a, a double bottle adapter that might also be something but yeah the dynamic block gives you a lot of options for the future let's put it like this the, this gun will never be boring because there's so much that's going to come out 
so much accessories and things you can do with this dynamic block with all the air channels and everything everywhere I mean think about double bottles at the back double bottles at the front pistol version folding stock version there's so much you can do with this dynamic block and that's why they call it a dynamic block so you kind of when you buy this gun you kind of future proof yourself for for your hobby because there's so much tinkering you can do after that so yeah I think they did a brilliant job and that's why I love this gun and that's why I think it's got a very bright future well that is it we are done for the day it turned out to be an absolutely beautiful day we had loads of fun the gun performed as expected so if you like this video please hit the like button remember to subscribe follow us on instagram and then we'll see you next time cheers